Hi, y'all. Hey. So, <laughs> we just tried, we just taped this and tried to watch it and it didn't even tape, so I guess... Here we go again. Take two. <laughs> so today we're reviewing White Snake. Here I go again. No, we're not. What, what are we reviewing? Oh, yeah. I hope I didn't delete the picture. Uh, we are reviewing one of my choices, since it was my turn, to do Slayer, Rain and Blood. And I looked for the album and the CD, and I couldn't find either one. So there's the picture. That's the album cover. I like the artwork on that. It's very... Paints a picture, because it is a painted picture. I really like the artwork on there mm -hmm. as well. Um, so what do you think about this album? Well, it's one of my favorite albums. Always has been, because it was my first concert. And uh, got me into the band. Actually, I was already into the band, because I had the album first. That's why I went to see them. I've seen them at, uh, in 1986 on the Rain and Blood, on that tour, the Rain and Blood tour, with uh, Raven and Wasp as the headliner. And uh, at Hare Arena in Dayton, Ohio, which Hare Arena is no longer operating. But Can't the building. Can't see bands there no more. But the building is still there. <clears throat> and um, so, anyway, uh, the album is considered by a lot of people that are into thrash or just metal in general an essential album and uh, probably one of the best thrash albums of all time, which I'd say it's in the top three or five. For me, and. Um, the concert I went to, I uh, went with uh, a friend and then one of his friends, and they went to see Wasp. They were more fans of them, and I was fans of all three bands. And so uh, Slayer came on before Wasp and um, after Raven. And uh, Was Wasp the headlining Wasp band? Wasp was the headlining band. They were touring for Inside the Electric Circus oh. album. And um, uh, I think Raven was touring for... The Pack Is Back album, I think it was. So, uh, when Slayer was on, you know, um, there's a lot of moshing and headbanging going on, and uh, at one point in the show, there was a lot of distortion. I don't remember which song, and like the ceiling tiles were falling out of the ceiling. So that, you know, it's like, wow, they're going to make the ceiling fall down. Because... You was know, it just that loud? It was loud. It was really loud. And uh, That's pretty loud. They had like inverted crosses on each side of the stage and they were lit up and they would flash like super bright so you could see nothing but spots for a while. But uh, after they were done playing and Wasp came on, a lot of the fans that were there just to see Slayer, because <clears throat> there was definitely a divided crowd, they had... Uh, <clears throat> Prior to the show, they had had a bed sheet that they had sprayed Slayer on it and whatever it was. And to try to get Blackie Lawless's um, attention, the lead singer for Wasp, uh, they took the bed sheet and set it on fire. And it's like if it hit the ground, you know, there's, there's like alcohol all over the cement ground that probably would have went up in flames. So they did get his attention. He stopped the show and pointed at him and said, we're not going to play the rest of the show until the security gets those guys out of here, and which they did, and then they went on and played the show. So not only did the music leave a lasting impression, but all that left a lasting impression. And uh, I remember my friend and his friend were smoking pot all the way up there and drinking, and I, I didn't really care for the idea of them trying to drive and doing that, but hey, this was the 80s, and he was young. This was uh, the the eighties, not the gaieties. You were just a young and I still am a young. So anyway, uh, take it away. So for me, um, this album, the album as a whole. Let me just say this first: the album as a whole, as a whole album, for a thrash fan, would be a, a good album. For me, as a non-thrash, say that ten times fast. I can't. <laughs> thrash fan, um, is not so much. The guitar playing on this album was fantastic, fabulous, and that's the best part of the album for me. Um, I'm a lyric girl, as y'all know, so. I couldn't understand the lyrics, therefore, 
there was no point in listening to it. I mean, if you're going to listen to music without lyrics, then you're listening to the music for the music. If you're listening to music that has lyrics, you're listening to it, or maybe should be listening to it, because you enjoy the lyrics and you're creating an atmosphere. Um, but if you can't understand the lyrics, then there's really no point. In my opinion. Just my opinion. So, um... Not not high on my totem pole, so to speak. So, that's what I got to say about that. Well, um, this was one of the first albums that I got when I got into the thrash metal, I guess. And uh, it's even funny to say that now, thrash metal. Um, I had uh, I had Slayer, Rain and Blood, uh, Megadeth, Peace Cells, But Who's Buying, and Metallica, Ride the Lightning, and then later Merciful Fate, Don't Break the Oath pretty much all at the same time and um i played those for a long time you know and periodically was buying other stuff later on like uh i think i'd said in one of my videos on my channel uh one of the guys i went to school with he bought uh possessed seven churches just on a whim and he he hated it he said you want this yeah man so that's that's how i got introduced to possessed so it just you know it was that kind of thing you read magazines with uh like Hit Parader and uh, Rip Magazine. Metal Edge was one that I had a lot. Uh, and Circus, of course. Uh, there were so many metal magazines in the 80s. Um, and even MTV was showing a lot of metal with Headbangers Ball. And then they had the half hour metal hour, um, half hour, metal half hour or something. And it's like, with all the commercials, they were lucky to show three videos on that. But. You know, you would see stuff like that once in a while. And some of those harder right. bands, some of those heavier bands, like Motorhead and stuff, you wouldn't see very much because either they didn't have videos that existed or they just, I don't know, until they made videos, what are you going to play? You know, they play a few live clips here and there, but I don't think Slayer truly had a video uh, until, I don't know, a couple albums after this one. I don't think they made a video. They had the Ultimate Revenge uh, VHS that came out with Venom and Exodus that you could buy in the store, but as far as uh, any other live material, I don't think they had anything at this point. So, I mean, you can go on YouTube now and watch anything as far back as you want to go with pretty much any band. So, but it wasn't like that then. There was tape trading. I remember trading, uh, doing a little bit of tape trading, not a lot. And I got Slayer. It was a live concert from I don't remember where now. Uh, and there were songs that they played songs on there that I hadn't heard because they were on their albums previous to Rain and Blood. And um, so, yeah, I'd give it 10 spins. Do you, would you say that this is in your top five because it's a good album or because you have nostalgia reasons to like it? Well, initially, if you'd asked me back in 1986, I'd have said it was in my top five because of, I like the songs and it made an impression on me. It was so different for, uh, for anything else at the time, so on and so forth. If you asked me that now, like you just did, I'd say because of nostalgic reasons. So okay. then, then it was for those reasons. Now it's for that reason. It's still a good album. I still like it. I still can listen to it. Um, but yeah, some albums, some music does change over a period of time. Uh, it, and some albums increase your, uh, I mean, there's stuff that I buy on vinyl strictly because I have to have it because I had it at one time. Because I have albums like that, that, I mean, I've gotten not only because it's nostalgic for me. Let's just take, for instance, Motley Crue. All of Motley Crue stuff up to Dr. Feelgood is nostalgic for me, but I absolutely love the music on it. Right. So I understand that. And some people, you know, and if, if you're one of these people out here, that it's totally fine. I'm not saying anything negative, but as far as like some people like certain bands at a certain age. And then once they get older, they won't listen to that. They'll move on to something else. Now, some people do that because, you know, you've explored this genre of music and then you're going into this genre of music if you like all kinds of stuff and you have an open mind and everything. But then some people was like, oh, well, you know, I used to listen to that band when I was in high school and I've outgrown that now. I never grew up. 
So that's why I still like pretty much everything I used to like. And then everything that I wasn't into at the time, I'm into now. And then, of course, some things that didn't exist, I couldn't be into it back then, could I? I'm okay. just rambling on. So. Okay. How many spins? Oh, um, for me, spins, I would give three spins. Ten for me. Sorry. Ten for me. And um, the Slayer has currently two original members still with them, Carrie King and Tom Arreira. Arreira. Um, Jeff Hanneman, of course, has passed away. And, um, <laughs> say it again. I can't say it the first time. <laughs> and um, the drummer had left, the original drummer had left years ago. Um, so it, can't think so of his name right off. The album that we listened to had all the original members, though, right? Yeah, at the time. And yeah. now it doesn't. No. Have but, they put out a new record recently? Yeah, Relentless came out about a year and a half ago. And a lot of fans like it, a lot of fans don't, because a lot of fans say, and similar conversations you hear with Kiss, you know, oh, it's a tribute band now because it's this guy and that guy and so and so's not in it and they shouldn't carry on and blah, Are blah, all blah, the blah. members still alive? No. No, the Jeff Hanneman had passed away a few years ago. Um, and then Lombardo, Dave Lombardo is no longer in the band. He was the drummer, the original drummer. But you know, I have the live Blu ray of the concert they did in Vakken. And, okay. I mean, it's a great show. It's, everything sounds like it's supposed to, as far as I can, I'm concerned. Um, and, you know, with a lot of those bands that's been around since the 70s and 80s, you know, if any of them are going in any, in any form, I mean, that's all they can do because you get what you take, you take what you can get, get what you can take. Vice versa. Yeah. So, I don't have a problem with anybody uh, continuing as a band. Because that's the only way they can do it is to get new members and keep going. Otherwise, they're going to have to call it quits, regardless. And so, I don't know if they're going to do another album or not. There's rumors that they're not going to. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. Are they about our age or are they older than us? Well, they came out in the 80s, so. They're probably a little bit older than us. Probably. Um, just wondering. She's Wonder Woman. Um, I am. Um, so next time on Versus, Wonder Woman, that's me, um, we're going to be doing Dinosaur Junior Farm. I love the cover of this album. Um, it is the second album and it's a double album and, um, Show that in your next video. What attracted me to this record is this front cover. I love this artwork so much. That's another episode. Um, but anyway, so um, I'll tell you why I like the music, or if I don't like the music, stay um, tuned. Stay tuned. Um, so thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, leave your comments below. And uh, I'll be happy to answer anything that you comment. Um, stay tuned for vinyl updates. I know he recently got some new vinyl. Um, and old vinyl. He got some new old vinyl. Old new vinyl. And, um, you did too. No, you did No, I haven't. I haven't gotten any new vinyl since my last vinyl update. But that don't mean anything. You might be surprised at what I might show on, on this channel. Mm -hmm. So, um... So just stay tuned for any updates. I love to see one say, stay gold, pony boy. <laughs> I wish I would have thought of that. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going with. Um, and any other projects that we have mm. going on. All that stuff. And all that stuff. Yep. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Stay golden, pony boy. Ya.